I sit to people and I say, you know, you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. And they go, yeah. Then why the f you hang around with that dude? He's a dork. You know, you know that you know the first part's true, but by extension, you won't stop hanging around with nerds. So you to know the first one and not to rectify the second point makes you an idiot at best. But truthfully, you need masculine competition around you. I can't imagine living my life without constant masculine competition. I said this endless times about why I'm I'm living with my brother and my cousin still to this day. I love having all you guys come and visit me in the house. And the reason for that is because there's a degree of competition which exists amongst men that doesn't happen when you have your, your chick there. If I move in with my chick, life's good. Life's great. Comfortable. There's dinner. There's breakfast. There's Netflix. snacks. There's we watching movies. The like endless. Sex. She's all. You want a massage? Yeah. And you. And yeah, I'll still hit the gym because I'm me. But you don't have that brutality. You don't have that brutality of your brother walking in and saying, "Oh, how many? Five hundred. You're a loser. Six hundred. And you got to do it, right? You need that competition amongst men and you have to find a way to, you have to find a way to create your reality and make sure it already exists for you. And it, it really isn't that difficult. It's very much like the pawn chat I gave earlier. If you're a man who's competitive, you're going to find men to compete against. And everyone loves competition. Every single human alive, females love competition. They're checking their Instagram likes all day long. <laughs> and men love competition because they're sitting on Twitch playing video games. It's just they're doing dumb shit, right? As a man, you have to sit there and say, I have to remove all the cheap dopamine, all the cheap replacements for what I'm actually looking for. I, I said this to Tristan the other day. The reason I don't play video games is not because I'm anti video games. It's because they look fun as fuck. I see these video game videos and I'm like, that looks bad at what grenade. Call Ross, of Duty. Ross. Well, he's running in and out. It looks fun. And that's why I'm, no, I'm not going to play that because what's going to happen is I'm going to end up good at that shit because I'm me. And I end up spending so many hours becoming good at something and believing that it matters when it doesn't. If I want to feel dopamine for being a badass, I'm going to do it the old school, hardest way. Bench press. That's not as fun, right? But at least, you know, if I really want to beat, me and Tristan have our own personal bench records in the house. I'm going to try and beat Tristan's record. And, and you have to stop chasing all the cheap dopamine, the cheap bullshit, and go back to the hard shit. And then you're going to improve your life. But you need to be living amongst competitive men and bitten some competition in your life. And if you're a middle-class kid and you're sitting there, you need to look around at your friends and say, how am I competing with my friends? And in what regard am I competing with them? And if it's only video games and dumb shit, then you have the wrong friends. If you don't believe in anything traditionalistic, you don't believe in anything religious, you don't believe in even winning and losing, your mind is completely empty and ready for their programming. And they'll convince you of anything they need to convince you of. Whether it's to be afraid of the common cold or whether to believe that a man is a woman or to believe any of the things they decide that you now need to believe to make you a better slave. The people who are in charge of the world have no interest in your actual personal sovereignty and your personal happiness. They want you to do what they need you to do. The same way a farmer wants his sheep. He wants his sheep alive. He doesn't want them to die, but he wants them to do what they're supposed to do. He doesn't want sheep who start going and off track. Yep. That's no, that's no good yep. for the farmer. To sit there and understand that they're trying to destroy even the basic things of competition. They're trying to destroy absolutely everything. Everything is under assault. Absolutely everything. And you can create and curate a life and create an ecosystem and create almost to a degree an echo chamber where it's very difficult for the slave world programming to affect you. If the slave world, the slave, the clown world and the slave mind, if they come along and try and convince me of X and I walk into this room and try and tell you what they told me, oh, there's gonna be a lot of people saying, Andrew, come on, G, you know better than that. So you can create a reality which makes you very, very difficult to program. And that's your job. It's amazing the power of luck, right? And even if you're wrong, if you're fucking trapped in a, if you're, you're fucking trapped on a shipwreck by yourself, just you on an island by yourself, I believe you're going to do better. You're going to have a higher chance of survival if you believe you're lucky as opposed to believe you're unlucky. You could sit there and go, I'm unlucky. I was shipwrecked. Or you can go, I'm lucky. I'm alive. I found an island. Yes, there's no, there's no advantage to the negative mindset. It's just a, it's just detrimental. There's no point. Yeah, Darwin said it in The Origin of Species, even though I am a Christian, I do not believe in evolution. He said that the most adaptable species survive. He didn't say it's the strongest or the fastest or the hardest to kill. He said it's the most adaptable, the one that can adapt quickest to a changing scenario, a changing situation. And I think it's the same for humans as well. The ones who are going to be the most successful are usually the most adaptable uh, and also the quickest. We live in a very, very fast world now where things are happening extremely quickly. And people who are slow or are slow to adapt or slow to change always get left behind and get wrecked. Think about the people who quickly adopted to, I don't know, Bitcoin, for example, or quickly adapted to selling things online or quickly adapted to starting their own YouTube channel. Being first, you'll do very well going first. Mm -hmm. uh, so adaptation is extremely important. Speed's extremely important. 
And most people are living under constraints and the largest constraints they have are obviously the order of society, which is constructed by governments because governments need to know who's inside of their countries and who lives there and who travels. Of course they do, why wouldn't they? And if you have one government that's constraining you, you lack adaptability. You have more passports and more, more bank accounts and more residencies and more driver's licenses and you have money offshore and you have all these kind of things and you're certainly a more adaptable individual. I could get up right now and move to Philippines and live there forever and go to my Filipino bank account and get enough money to sit on a beautiful island for the rest of my entire life. I could do that. So that's adaptability. I have a choice. I have an option that other people don't have. And if you're under the jurisdiction of one government, then you're certainly not really very easy to pin down and control. And I think that the first thing you should do once you start to make money is understand, okay, I now have money. Now I need adaptability because adaptability gives me a degree of power. So I need to start thinking about how it's done. And it's not even difficult. The number of people I speak to and say, hey, bro, where are you from? Oh, I'm half Irish, half this. I'm, so you, how many passports you got? Oh, just one. Hmm. You're half Irish, bro. Do the ancestry thing. Go them, say ancestry, boom, ancestry, half Irish, and get your fucking passport. It, oh, it's a headache. If it's a headache, then hire a lawyer and pay him. Just do it. You, you don't even go do much. Sign three forms. Like you really think that having that one passport is good is enough? I don't think it is. I think you need more and more and more and be under be on as many grids as possible. It's the best way to live off grid in the modern world. That's what I think. Well, when they canceled me, they came for my payment processing, they came for my banks, they came for lots of different things. But yeah. let's say, for example, example, let's say I had banks and payment processing out of Singapore. Do you think the Sing you think the people in Singapore give a shit about English speaking? In cancellation media bullshit. No, nope. they care about any of that. No, nope. they even read it. No. So if I was perspicacious and intelligent enough to have set up an identity and a banking structure and a payment processing structure in Singapore years ago, I would understand that no matter what they put in the media in the English speaking world is not going to affect my money. I would know that, right? I'd be a very smart man. Imagine how smart I'd be if I did that. That'd be a top G move. Top G move. That'd be a top G move. So when you do those kind of things, you're preparing and understanding. Yeah, okay, maybe the liberal mob and based out of California are gonna come for me. You think if I go to Singapore and say, give me my 10M, they're gonna be like, anything other than, yes, sir, yes, Mr. Tate, yes, sir, here's your money. They don't give a f about this garbage. Mm -hmm. I prepared myself for a very, very long time for these things. And a lot of other people don't do that. And they sit around and just think, ah, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. It's all fine. The, everyone thought it was fine when Noah was building the ark. They thought he was crazy, right? Yep. Noah's crazy. Noah's crazy. It's going to be fine until it starts raining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then they're all knocking on the door. That's how it goes. You got to stay a step ahead. And this is another thing we talk about the hedonism and how that's a black hole. The amount of time you spend texting, you could have had yourself another passport, could have had yourself on offshore banking, could have had yourself a bunch of foreign driver's licenses, a bunch of residencies. You could have been able to travel during because you were a foreign citizen. Yep. You get banned from driving on one license and drive on another one. You could be above the law in so many ways. All you have to do is stop messaging that bitch and look it up online and fill in a different form. Like, but people are just distracted by the hedonism. It's a black hole.